A faint rumble was felt throughout the island. The villagers began to wonder what sort of land they had settled on, but they should have been wondering who they had settled on. Welcome to Monster of the Week. This week we are taking a look at the Zeratan. This episode is going to be a little bit different due to the nature of the beast. We will talk about its capability to do battle, but we'll be putting a lot more focus on how to use this creature in your game and how you can make the encounter more memorable. So what exactly is a Zeratan? A Zeratan is a colossal turtle. In fact, it's so big that most people often mistake its shell for some kind of landmass. They've been a part of D&D since 2nd edition, however they do make an appearance in 3rd edition in the art arms and equipment guide of all places. One of my favorite fantasy tropes is the landmass that actually turns out to be some sort of massive creature, so I love these guys. What do you think? I like turtles. All right, you're great zombie. In combat, the Zeratan relies on its tough shell and massive pool of hit points just to survive long enough until the attacker gives up. If the attack continues, the Zeratan will usually just dive underwater. However, when faced with a serious threat, it can unleash some devastating blows. The Zeratan can use its bite attack to crush pretty much anything that will fit within its powerful jaws, which is most things. It can also thrash its fins around, affecting everything within a 40-foot radius. Given its huge size, that's a really large area. All creatures within that area take damage. They can make a deck save to try to reduce that damage, but they're going to take some damage. Something that's not really mentioned anywhere, but I think makes the Zeratan a lot more interesting, would be the addition of guardians, or minions. What I mean by that is if I had a group of players that were trying to take down a Zeratan, once they were on the creature's body and inside its shell, I would have them fight some symbiotic creatures. It makes perfect sense for a creature that big to have some guardians. The Zeratan supplies them with a home and protection, and in return, they protect the weak spots of the Zeratan. You could use pretty much any aquatic creature for a role like this, but something like Kuotoa or Merfolk come to mind. When it comes to communication with the Zeratan, they can understand basic commands in common. So if you manage to get one on your side, you can tell it where to go and that sort of thing. But to truly communicate, you'll need to speak Aquan. In 5th edition, Aquan isn't actually its own language. It's simply a dialect of primordial, the language of the elementals. So depending on the rules of your world, your players might not necessarily need to speak Aquan. You could even just do away with that and go for maybe a more intelligent version of the Zeratan that can just straight up speak common. Depending on the role you have in mind for the creature, that could suit your game better. One thing that will inevitably come up if you place a Zeratan in your game is how do we train it? Zeratans are more or less untrainable, however they will follow commands with a sufficient intimidate or persuasion check. If you have a musician in the group, they also have the option of singing commands to the Zeratan with a perform check. When they don't have any current tasks, a Zeratan is happy to just peacefully drift wherever the currents take it. Now I'm sure the DM part of your brain is already coming up with millions of ways that you could drop a Zeratan into your campaign, and there are a lot of ways, but here are a few that I've come up with. One of my favorite ways to use the Zeratan is to have the players actually begin the campaign in a village that is on the back of the massive sea creature. They, of course, have no idea. They think they just live on an island. But I try my best to set up the big reveal by planting things like slight tremors now and then, or perhaps distant mountain ranges appearing a lot closer today than they were yesterday. One major reason for an increase in tremors on the Zeratan is that it's being attacked or pursued by something. From the player's perspective, this means a big increase in the amount of monsters seen near the village. Should they trace back the origin of these monsters, they may just find the head of the Zeratan under attack and its merfolk guardian struggling to keep the creature alive. If the players assist the merfolk in staving off the attackers, they will not only come to the realization that they're living on a giant turtle, but that giant turtle will be very grateful to them. Usually this will lead into a storyline where the players have the chance to help the Zeratan rid its shell of evil for good. But, you could just use that as a setup for an even bigger threat. Maybe the Zeratan's attackers were just the pawns of a much bigger evil lurking on the mainland. I find this adventure can work really well with new players, as it sets the precedent that not everything in D&D is just as it seems. It also makes the mainland and the rest of the world feel much more foreign and interesting, especially if none of your PCs have ever left Turtle Island. Now you may be thinking, that sounds great! But I've been running a game for two years now, so it's a little late for new beginnings. The great thing is though, this storyline can still work even if your players aren't from the island. Maybe the great evil in your campaign has led the players to the Zeratan. And now they have the opportunity to help out some local villagers, 
and gain a very powerful new ally. As ancient creatures, you could even have the Zeratan possess some sort of knowledge or specific piece of information that the players need. The Zeratan lives for an incredibly long amount of time. There's not actually a time span given, but it's implied that they're basically like dragons. So they're sure to have picked up some useful information in all that time drifting around the seas. Now, it's impossible to talk about aquatic creatures without bringing up everyone's favorite, Mind Flayers. So another option for an adventure could be a Zeratan that's being controlled by our telepathic and tentacly friends. I don't know about you, but nothing makes my players jump into action faster than an innocent creature being used for evil against its will. Maybe the players discover some local rumors about a nearby Zeratan that has been terrorizing trade ships. Any further investigation on that might lead your players to be a little bit confused, as Zeratans are normally very peaceful creatures. They might head out with the intention of slaying the beast, but once they get up close and personal, they're sure to realize what's going on. And if they don't, well, then they have a hell of a fight on their hands. The mere idea of the Zeratan doesn't necessarily have to be a tortoise either. I mean, by definition, the Zeratan is a giant turtle. But you could come up with your own version of this as well that is on the back of maybe a giant king crab or something like that. It works very well with sea creatures because it's easy to explain a floating island where the body is just under the water especially if it's something with a hard shell. But you could definitely do a version of this as well, where it's, say, a mountain that's actually some kind of ancient sleeping giant. I've even run a mini campaign in the past where the world was made up of several different islands that were all actually giant creatures, where the players actually had to go from island to island and liberate them from whatever was assailing them. This ended up culminating in the islands coming together and forming a giant landmass. And that landmass is actually where I have some of my games take place now. It's also very possible to just drop a Zeratan into one of your games as an encounter if your players are doing a lot of sea travel. And it will make your players confused at first when they think they're traveling through the open ocean and they spot this large island. So even without focusing on the creature aspect, it can still make for an interesting locale. So, what are some interesting ways to use the Zeratan that you've come up with? If you've got some ideas, please leave a comment below so we can talk about them. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you found it helpful. And if you like what I do here, please hit that subscribe button. I have at least one new video every week. And speaking of videos, moving forward, the Monster of the Week series is now going to be uploaded on Saturdays. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.